everyone, and welcome to the official Colts podcast. I'm Jeffrey Gorman. Lara Overton to my right, J.J. Stankovic to our left. Some stories we'd like to tell but can't on the air, possibly. Do we want to go back for a minute? I mean, is there... Anything that we want to tell about ourselves? I mean, like, well, we, I mean, we were, I killed a man once, well, but nobody knows about JJ it. JJ right? did a really no, impressive <laughs> drill for all of us on how to elude a bear. So yeah, that well, was, but it turns out it wasn't really for a bear. I was doing serpentine, thinking that's what you have to do for a bear. But Lara correctly pointed out it's for a crocodile or an alligator. Right. Do you know what the difference between a crocodile and an alligator is? Big They're teeth, snouts, yeah. right? Uh, is that a thing that one of them has a squattier, wider snout, and the other is like a longer yeah. snout? Then, then we were discussing, uh, Amanda Foster uh, brought this up behind the camera over there as well, that the, uh, the sayings for bears are, let me see if I can get this right. You got it. If it's black, fight back. If it's brown, lay down. And if it's white, say goodnight. Good night. Okay, good night. hold on. What yeah. kind of bear is the Chicago bear? I think it's a brown bear. Oh, that's gonna, no, 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 no. That's Grizzly? Gonna be a Midwest black bear type of a thing. No, 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 no. You ever see what? Staley the bear? That is a brown bear. Brown bear. Yeah. But there's no brown bears in that region, though. Nor, I mean, let's, so let's there are no see. lions in Detroit. Ah, uh, go to the zoo, my friend. Okay, go to the go to the Lincoln Park Zoo. There are some bears in the Lincoln Park Zoo. Welcome to the official Colts <laughs> podcast, and I hope we start right here because I never killed a man, but I wanted to say something, you know, that was stupid and it didn't sound great. Intro. Right. Yeah, really. About hopefully we can clean that up again. JJ Lara <laughs> is here. We wanted a different uh, ending on Sunday. You know, thought that. Uh, this team was ripe to be picked off, and I'm talking about the Detroit Lions, but it didn't happen. Lacking offensively, and right now, just the way that it is in the NFL and with this team, Lara, let me start with you. All eyes will always be on Anthony Richardson here. Yeah. They certainly will against the Lions. Uh, I want to start with here. Didn't get some help that he needed in some areas. Drops. Uh, we had some penalties that was ridiculous. The amount of numbers, we'll get to those. But, uh, but AR overall, the stat line... And the win-loss, the way they came out, it, there was a different story right there. Yes, it's a much bigger picture than what the stat line will reflect in terms of Anthony's performance on Sunday. I thought he was really decisive with some of his throws. He had some great runs, broke off some really nice runs. No sacks allowed, which was huge up against this defensive front. Uh, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the story of this one is just going to be that he had 10 penalties, and it's not even necessarily the number of penalties. It's the plays on which they came. Ooh. Almost every big play downfield was called back due to an array of penalties just across various people, not to put the blame on any one person. Never is that way. But, yeah, there were just these great catches, great passes by AR that would then be negated. So it was kind of one of those days where – you just, I mean, for lack of better explanation, but just like nothing was falling into your lap. Like against a team like the Detroit Lions, the hottest team in football, you got to have some things that kind of go your way. You got to have, you know, a, some luck at some points. You got to have some things that are out of favor on their front. And everything was just going the way of Detroit on Sunday. Unfortunately, none of those breaks came the Colts way. Um, I mean, you did have Latu with a nice highlight, the strip sack of Jared Goff. Uh, you had some opportunities there with your defensive front, but just, you know, not enough consistent plays and what really killed you. Of course, I think that the two things you're going to point to penalties are I mean, one of them. The other is just lack of converting within the red zone. You had early yeah. on in particular, really nice drives. You were moving the ball. Well, you controlled time of possession through the first half, which you knew was going to be a significant factor in terms of keeping that Detroit offense off the field as much as possible. But you got into the red zone and you had to settle for field goals versus touchdowns. And that is just not going to do it against most teams in the league, especially when you have one that is as high scoring as Detroit is. So that's the couple of factors right there that I'm going to look to. The, I want to go back to what you talked about with Anthony and the sacks, because that, that is an impact here, right? Of like, you, you, you can look at his stat line and say 11 to 28. And if you don't watch the game, if you don't turn on the tape, you might say, man, he, he sucked in that game. He was awful. But Anthony Richardson, this game, he was under pressure on 13 dropbacks per pro football focus. He was not sacked once. There were two quarterbacks in week 12 who were not sacked. Anthony Richardson on 13 dropbacks and Baker Mayfield on four dropbacks. Wow. So that tells you how good Anthony Richardson was at avoiding sacks. And a throwaway versus a sack, you're looking at a loss of eight on a sack or zero. Right. 
because of the throwaway. Anthony Richardson threw three passes away when he was pressured. So those all count toward his ledger, right? But those are all plays that could have been sacks had he not got the ball away. I mean, like, I saw someone tweet out, I don't remember who it was, that, like, Will Levis is some of the best tape of any quarterback, second-year quarterback over the last few weeks. Oh, okay. Okay, well, you look at Will Levis' passing stats against the Texans. Great, thumbs up. He took eight sacks in that game. Mm. Anthony Richardson took zero. Right. Yeah. So, who would you rather have there? Would you rather have the guy who's losing you five to eight yards – on a significant percentage of his dropbacks or a guy who's avoiding those plays. And, and look, I don't mean, I don't want this to sound like we're, we're making all these excuses for Anthony Richardson and all that, but like, just turn on the tape, please. Mm-hmm. Before you have a take about mm-hmm. Anthony Richardson, go and watch the tape. Watch every one of his incompletions. Watch every one of his completions and tell me what you think. Because I thought, like you said, Lara, I thought the decisiveness was there. This was not the type of game where he has a sub-50% completion percentage that we saw earlier in the season, where he was missing throws, the decision-making. No interceptions. No interceptions. No, no, not even a ball thrown into harm's way Mm -mm. in this game. There there was, you know, none of those plays where you felt like he, he was maybe sped up and he missed a throw or he missed a guy or he missed a read, he missed a protection. There really wasn't a lot of that. And that gives me a lot of positivity about Anthony Richardson going through these last five games, which we're going to get into, that your season still lies ahead of you Mm -hmm. right now. And if you get this play out of Anthony Richardson and you get better execution from the guys around him, the Colts could win quite a few of these games. Stay in this zone with me for a minute. Both ways where you just said, Anthony needs a little bit of help. I want to talk about the offensive line. Give me the Anthony angle with the offensive line. Obviously, he had three or four plays where they would have been sacks. He made them no sacks, just like we said. But then on the other side, Jonathan Taylor and the lack of the running game. Larry, I'm going to go over with you. I want to concentrate on the offensive line. There's a lot of youngsters up there right now. Three rookies. Yeah. I mean, how many offenses are you are starting three rookies up right. front right yeah. now? You know, I think that is that is an interesting factor. And they've done an incredible job. I mean, Tony Sperano has done an incredible job preparing that group week in and week out. But yeah, it's just going to be really tough when you go up against such a veteran, stout defensive front like the Detroit Lions are. You know how physical, how imposing they are with those front four. So they're just going to make it incredibly difficult, whoever is up there. And yeah, and you saw that that was really reflected in your lack of ground game against Detroit with just, it was slow going. And it has been slow going for Jonathan Taylor in the last few weeks. Yeah, I mean, th- this Colts team is going to struggle to be consistent when Jonathan Taylor is really averaging under three yards per carry. I mean, any team's going to struggle when their running back is not getting that. I know JT was a little over three in this game on Sunday, but I mean, you throw out that 14 yard run he had on third and 20, and he was averaging 2.1 yards per carry. Mm. So it, it's, it's a, that's not sustainable there. And whatever the solution is, you know, Shane Steichen kind of told us that's kind of top of mind this week that, look, regardless of who's on the field for the offensive line, if you got three rookies out there, looks like you might have Danny Pinter starting at center this week with Tanner Bordellini being the concussion protocol. You just signed Mark Lewinsky to the practice squad. Do you think about maybe elevating him up at right guard? But whoever is out there, you've got to figure out a solution. And that's something that Shane Steichen, I, I thought he had a really good answer to this question on Monday he was asked about attrition during the season and like how that impacts you. And he was like, it can't Mm -hmm. whoever is on the field. You've got to find a solution on how every team deals with right. Every team deals with it. And the Colts have dealt with a lot of attrition on their offensive line. When let's not forget when Will Fries got hurt, he was playing like one of the best, if not the best right guard in the NFL. Mm -hmm. And that was a big loss for this football team. Oh, sorry. I was just remind me, remind me, remind everyone else. When is the earliest Ryan Kelly can come back? What's the Broncos game? Broncos. So okay. you, right. you will be without him okay. for one, at least one more game. Okay. Um, hopefully he's back for that game against Denver. He can get back for the stretch run after the bye week. Guys, okay. Because I was there. trying to like I was trying to keep in, in in line. Like oh, I was yesterday. I had Tyquan Lewis for Colts 360, and I was like, okay, wait, what game did he miss, or what yep. game did he get hurt in? How many did he miss? When was Juju Brents? When's when, you know? Yeah. What's the title? There were Jim all these Carlisle's, guys that yeah, I, yeah mm-hmm. JC Carlisle. All these kind of factors I was trying to keep in mind. So it was good refresher on when Ryan's available to come. Uh, we're, where are we at with Tanner Bordellini? Where are we at with Danny Pinter this so we'll, week? So we'll see with Bordellini. Uh, Shane Steichen told us on Monday that he's in the concussion protocol. Mm-hmm. It's not impossible for a guy to clear it within a week, but it's pretty rare. So Shane, Shane did say, you know, 
Danny Pinter would be the guy in there. You know, the, the Colts kept Danny Pinter around this offseason. He, he missed all of 2023. He was on IR with, a, I think Bro- it was an ankle. Broken ankle. Broken ankle that he had against uh, Philly. In the preseason uh, game. Yeah. So, you know, that that's a, uh, he's a guy who's got some experience in there. We've seen him play some good football at center specifically. Oh, yeah, because he stepped in for Ryan Kelly in 22 mm-hmm. for a stretch of time. Yep, and, and in, in 2021. Yep. Um, so, you know, the, the Colts kept him around for a reason, and this is the reason. He, if he has to go start you a game, you're going to need workable play out of him at center because – you got to be able to run the ball against New England if you want to have a shot in this Guys, game. Guys, it's, 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 uh, I'm going to play the devil's advocate, the guy that's watching from the upper deck over there. you got an RPO quarterback. You've got a guy like Anthony Richardson. You've got a guy like Jonathan Taylor behind it. That RPO game. There was one carry in the second half for Jonathan Taylor. And like I said, I'm that guy up there looking. Why isn't that more consistent? We've talked about it on this show. The more you feed that beast, the better he gets. Obviously, didn't show up right there. Is this strictly an offensive line issue? Oh, and I want to bring up, you know, what AR brings with that RPO. If he's going to tuck it and run, that's an option there. Or Jonathan Taylor, hey, you got smooth sailing. Why isn't it flowing right there? Is it all centered on this offensive I, line? I, no, I think there. You know, Shane Steichen kind of intimated there are some schematic things mm-hmm. that can be Explain done a little that, bit please. differently. Explain it, please. I mean, you're. You're just, you know, if, if you want to get to more stuff to get Jonathan Taylor in space, for example, mm-hmm. maybe you try working some of that in. Um, you know, I think some of the inside zone stuff has slowed down a little bit over the last couple of weeks. And, and the Colts are primarily a zone running team, and they, they run a lot of inside zone. But on those inside zone plays where you've seen defensive lines get a little more push lately, those become a little bit tougher sledding for Jonathan Taylor. And, you know, maybe there's stuff that JT could do differently, too. You know, I haven't taken a deep dive mm-hmm. into what it's looked like there. But I think it when, when the run game struggles, it's kind of everyone, right? Everyone's got to take some responsibility, some piece of that responsibility from coaching to the running back to the offensive line. You know, even Anthony Richardson said there may be some decisions where I could have kept it instead mm-hmm. of giving right. it to JT on his own read. That's going to lead to, you know, a, a no yard gain or a one yard loss that's going to knock his numbers down, too. Lara, does this thing change? Uh, I'm, I'm staying with the Lions game. Does this outcome change? I, I think it does dramatically because I went over it. If Drew Ogletree, and we're not bagging on the kid whatsoever, but you drop the touchdown pass at the goal line, is this game different at that point right there? Oh, it was a huge momentum. It would have been a huge momentum swing for you. Yeah, I think so. I do too. I just think the way that that would have run out. There's, a, I mean, there's a lot, lot of things sure. you could do. Hindsight 2020, you know, different things that you could look to. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's it's not just that play. There are a, a number of those plays where you're like, you could hinge on probably two to three over the course of that game that would have completely flipped the outcome in your favor. I, I mean, I, I think it goes back to the red zone, right? Of like, oh. the you get a second and two on the four-yard line and you're not able to punch in a touchdown there. You get the, the, the throw Anthony made to Drew Ogletree that goes through his hands that you don't get a touchdown there. That changes the complexion of the game mm. because Detroit, I think once they got the lead, they were able to kind of just keep the Colts at arm's length mm. with what they were doing yeah. on offense. It wasn't anything spectacular, but they never, they never operated like they were threatened mm. in that game. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and that, I think that changes if you score a couple early touchdowns. The other area that I look to is the fact that your defense came up with some significant stops, the fourth down stops. You mm-hmm. forced some three and outs. Got to convert you, off of that. you exactly, got to turn that into something. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You weren't able to capitalize on your defense, putting you in really good position in a couple of critical scenarios. So that's another one, too, I think that I would, would point to um, as well that really could have turned the tide and swung momentum in your favor and made this much more competitive in the second half. Hey, before we get into the swing of our, what the next five weeks look like, I want to stay offensively. Just what, from what you guys observe while you're watching practice, while you're cutting up film, tight ends in this offense. Again, last week there were four receptions, you know, and I, I watched games like that was on, you know, Lamar Jackson with Mark Andrews oh, yeah. or, or, the, or the likely kid or, you know, the, the big tight end play mm-hmm. from these – these quarterbacks that can sling it down the field and also run like the wind down the field, like Anthony Richardson. These guys got to get more involved in this offense, JJ. I mean, it's just been such a just a touch and go with these tight ends all yeah, year. Yeah, here's why I think they're going to need to get more involved this week specifically. Mm-hmm. We'll see what Josh Downs' status is. I know there, there's been reports that he is a long shot to play mm-hmm. on Sunday. We have not heard that from Shane Steichen yet, so we'll kind of get an idea of that as we get into the week. Ashton Doolin left the game with an injury as well. So we'll see what his status is. If you don't have either of those two guys, 
this could be a big A.D. Mitchell game, right. but you, you might need your tight ends to get more involved in the passing game mm-hmm. in, in this game against New England because if you're going to be more of a if – you, if you don't have downs on the field and you maybe are a little more, okay, let's be 12 personnel, two tight ends, and let's run the ball, you got to be able to throw it out of those situations and you got to be able to get the ball to Mo Eli Cox, to Colin Granson, to Drew Ogletree – in those situations, and then they got to go execute and make those plays. Again, if you don't have downs and you can just say, we're going to be 11 personnel all the time and kind of set it and forget it. Um, JJ, and also, I mean, a lot of the time that these tight ends were on the field against Detroit, they were coming in for some protection help mm-hmm. as well, right. right? Like, I mean, that was a big factor. That was a, a heavy workload game for them, knowing how Detroit was going to try to attack you. You wanted to try and reinforce that, bring in some of those big guys, Mo and Drew in particular for that, right? Yeah, and I think it just gets magnified when they have few opportunities in the passing game. Right. And you, you know, you get the ball that goes through Ogletree's hands. You get the one where Granson... Uh, you know, I don't, and, mm. and th- this is kind of a gray area thing where, like, I don't know how it's coached. I don't know what the scheme was. I don't know if if Granson was hot on that play. Where, you know, Anthony threw it. He didn't get his head around, and it was incomplete. I don't know if Granson should have got his head around there. If Anthony threw it early, so I don't want to put blame on anyone on that play. But yeah. when you get those incompletions, and it looks like the guy's wide open, and you missed him, and you have so few of those then it gets more magnified yeah. of what's going on with that tight end room. But I think you're right, Lara, like the context of it is that those guys were not asked to do a ton. But when they do get their opportunities, you do need to see a little more execution. There. I, saw, I saw a nice mature moment. I don't mean that mature like I'm back there looking at the maturation of Anthony Richardson, but leadership qualities, that drop who Drew Ogletree had, mm-hmm. he was right in the face of his tight end, and he said, hey, I got you. I'm right there. And after you. the game, what he said I thought yeah. was great was, about it, too. As, of like, as well. Like, they're not going to catch everything. I, I, gotta, you oh, know, I can make absolutely. better throws more frequently, like stuff like that. It yeah. was a and really good answer. I also uh, noted it was one of those early drives uh, in which you didn't convert within the red zone. Um, I watched Anthony go to the bench and walk down and had a good lengthy conversation with the offensive line after that. Just, just very yeah. constructive, just trying to get on the same page. Like it was just so such a great like command. He was taking charge, like all of those yep. things. Like, and those are the things that a lot of people aren't going to see, right? You don't catch those on the TV broadcast. These are other mm-hmm. things that are kind of happening down on the field that I just saw really great evolution within this entire offense of just that ongoing conversation, that constant communication of immediately dialing in on the miscues that you had and then figuring out what you needed to do on your next drive out there. JJ, this this Lions team didn't need 50 points like they had done mm-hmm. three times this year. They're averaging 33 out there. Obviously, the 24-point output at Lucas Oil Stadium wasn't up to that average, which is a feather in the cap, if you will, on the Colts defense. They showed up, guys. They showed up the best that they could on this. I want to just talk about the Tyquan Lewis back in the mix a little bit, how much he helped this okay, defense so, and what this defense looks like moving forward. So getting Tyquan back means you are as close to full strength on your defensive line as you have been since the start of the season. Good. Yeah. Because DeForest Buckner left week one with a back with a back injury. Mm-hmm. He was very much limited in week two until he had the ankle injury. Then he went on IR. While he was on injured reserve, Quiddy Pay missed some time with a quad injury. Mm. Taekwon Lewis then has the elbow injury that knocks him out until last week. You get Quiddy back, then you get Buck back, now you get Taekwon back. And you've got your eight deep rotation that you want. You got your four defensive ends in Quiddy, Latu, Odangbo, Taekwon. You got your four defensive tackles, Buck, Grove, Taven Bryan, Raekwon Davis. That's your rotation right there. And you're going to feel really good about what you can do with that, especially coming out of the bye, especially because you're seeing the flashes from Latu become closer together now. Early in the season, it was you get one here, you get one here. Now it's like you get one here, one here. Right. One here, one here. Like he, it, he's starting to really come on strong against, as the second half of the season. Aaron goes Rodgers on. and Jared Goff. Like mm-hmm. you've got sacks in consecutive weeks. And the other thing, you you know this, I'm sure, but Laotu Latu right now tied for first among rookies in strip sacks so far this nice. season. Yeah, he's got okay. two. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Um, right, it's two, or does he have three? It's either two or three. I Yeah. Uh, you check that while I'll go yes. on this tangent right here. This will here. take me very little um, time. Taekwon Lewis, who, you know, one of those guys who we just absolutely, we have he's so got three. much fun. Three, okay, fantastic. Um, we um, have so much fun with, with Taekwon. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had a great conversation with him. He was on three, 360. Had him, had him on 360, yeah. talked to him for a while after the game. He was initially told that he would miss more, that he probably wouldn't be back until after the bye or right around the bye week. 
And he said about three weeks ago, he just decided, they told him like, oh, okay, he decided, no, I'm going to make it back sooner. And they're like, all right. He said, I'm going to make it back for the Jets game. And they're like, that might be a little ambitious. So he said, I'm making it back for the Detroit game. And he said that there was basically a three week span that he just manifested and mm. would not be denied and attacked his rehab harder than he ever had because he was just so determined to beat that window that they had given him that he would be back. Like he just felt like that he knew that he could beat that and exceed that. And that when he got back, he could make an immediate impact on this team. And given the severity of the injuries that Taekwon has dealt with before, he said that really benefited him in knowing how to attack rehab because he said the rehab process is so much more mental than physical. Sure. So just being through yeah. some of those crazy injuries that he'd had, both patellas, all of that, that he just was like, okay, with this one, this is the rare injury in which my, I know my season's not over. If I have a glimpse of you're telling me, oh, I can come back, not only am I coming back, but I'm going to fast track that by – you know, maybe three weeks to get back sooner than what we initially expected. Hey, man, uh, uh, with an injury list that, that Taekwon's had in the last three, four years, some people pack it up, send it in, say enough. That's a warrior. That guy keeps showing up, showing up, showing up, going through major injury, and he's such a solid player like that. Guys, I ask a lot of dumb questions. I'm going to ask JJ the first one here. Stupid question number one. It, it, is it good? Is it bad? We've got three of the top ten tacklers in the NFL. Uh, I think that is probably a sign of how teams have attacked this defense, that it's that many players. I think individually, you're like, okay, you're getting good play out of Zaire Franklin. Mm -hmm. Nick Cross has been rock solid. There's really, good. really impressed with Nick Cross this season. Agreed. The development he's made, the strides he has made. You know, EJ Speed getting in there too. I think that's probably been a product of how teams have attacked the Colts. If it's like it, – we've had years where it's been like one guy, right? Yeah, right. We're like Z's up there. He's got 170 tackles, mm -hmm. and it's like that's because he's just a monster in the interior. This is like you're getting a ton of opportunities for tackles, and you got to make them. Like th those guys are still making the plays. This isn't to diminish that, hey, the plays are coming to them, and they're, they're mm -hmm. making them. But I think having that many guys up there is probably a sign teams are really trying to attack this Colts team with the ground game, which obviously we saw early in the year. And then probably with a lot of stuff over the middle. I mean, how many times did Jared Goff dump it off to David Montgomery right, right. on the a check down game. in this game? Gosh. The screen game, exactly. Oof. Like That's how teams are attacking this Colts defense, it seems like. Nick Cross, a little bit more on him. Quiet guy. Don't hear a lot of him out of the press. Yeah. Had some issues. He was benched. He yeah. was up. He was benched in the last couple of years. But yeah. like you said, you're well, really surprised. He was a really year. young player when he yeah. came in, right? You you knew that. that. 20? Yeah. When he was, yeah. He was the like youngest player in the NFL when he made his yeah. debut yeah. in 2022. out of Maryland. And I talked to Shane about this on Monday when we sat down for Colts 360. And he said that really going back to last season, this is not just a this season thing. This is going back to last year. Nick committed to being one of the first guys in this building. Shane said he's here at 530. Wow. He's one of the earliest guys into the building doing all the additional extra things. He's just really committed and taken, you know, how, I mean, how much have we heard this season? The process, the process, the process. I think Nick Cross is a great example of committing to mm -hmm. the process, looking at the guys around and figuring out what are the additional things that I need to do if I'm going to be the best version of myself for this defense. And he took all of those things to heart. Seriously, Shane said it's every additional thing, extra time in film, meeting room, getting in here early, training room, weight room, whatever it is, Nick Cross has committed to it, and it is seeing dividends in and 2024. It's another reminder that like development is not linear. Like, yeah. Nick Cross started off, hey, this is great. First, Remember the first rep he had in training camp? He picked off Matt Ryan in 7-on-7. Seven seven. That's right. Yeah. Oh, uh, does that feel like a lifetime that ago? That does feel like a lifetime ago. And you're like, you're sitting there being like, man, okay, like, Maybe the Colts got something here. Maybe he's going to start week one. He does start week one. He is benched well, by week two, and then he doesn't start again until he gets some, you know, a little at the end of last year, and all of a sudden, look where he is. Yeah. Well, because I think that early on, he's relying on, like, I mean, he is just genetically, like, talented, like, physically, like, I mean, it was unbelievable when you look at some of, you know, his um, measurables coming out of college, right? So, like, there's a level of that that you kind of 
get by with early on in particular. You're playing instinctive, you're playing fast, but then you kind of figure out how the rest of the league, you know, how complex right. everything is when you're facing different offenses week in and week out. You're facing different quarterbacks. You have to make different adjustments and all of that. So, yeah, I think that we have really seen Nick Cross build himself into a complete player, and that's such a credit to him. And, and look, I mean, there's still more development to go there. No certainly, question. But – I think, but now it, he knows the things right. to invest in the development and how you get there. And like if we're zooming out, I think you go into next year and you're like, okay, like Nick Cross is a starting safety on this football team right. and we can envision maybe even another step mm -hmm. for him. Okay, you've established yourself as you can start in this league on, on this defense. No, no, What's the next step? Next level, can you right. take a next step? And and. You know, hey, next year's a contract year for Nick Cross, for too. Sure. Yeah. Big so, one coming up. Hey, this is the Thanksgiving edition. Obviously, it's coming up at the end of this week. So we're going to be giving thanks on this show in just a minute. Thanks to everybody that's watching on the YouTube channel and, of course, our uh, Colts Audio Network. Thanks for listening in. All the information you want, especially from these two about the upcoming game and what the rest of the season looks like, go to Colts.com. At Lara Overton on Twitter X. At JJ Stankovitz, same way. Time now to give thanks. Oh, wait a minute. Not, not, not give thanks exactly just yet can we talk about the fan bases at that's going on at lucas oil stadium just just be quick with me guys we're all on the field down there we hear it jj you're upstairs let's go lions chance we heard those we heard the steelers when they came in we saw the bears like this really quick fans you've kind of gotten a draw of just some really <laughs> rabid yeah. midwestern fan we really bases. Have. It's easily kind drivable of been, it's, it's just been a weird year yeah, okay. where it's steelers bills lions bears they're like, showing up guys. they travel well it's an easy trip like it's just kind of i think that's Part right. of it they're, too is they're, it's a little. So you you were talking about things being magnified. Yeah. I think that's a little magnified this year, just because of how the right. schedule is. They're, they're showing up, but you didn't notice Steelers and Bears fans in those games mm -hmm. because the Colts won. Yeah, and you okay? You notice Bills and Lions fans. Bills and Lions won West. those games by three by three scores. Good point, JJ. And they're I mean, and they're two of the hotter teams in the league right now. I mean, I, you're, I, you're, I, I said the it on the pod last the week. Super Bowl. I think yeah. they're the two best teams in the league right. that the yeah, Colts I mean, just faced. You're, you're looking at those are probably teams that are going to be in the respective conference championships. And you said it earlier, under five hundred. Well, uh, you know, some people are going to show up, some aren't. You, you know, you get to nine and three at this point of the year. There's going to be a lot of fans. That are I, up there yeah, for... I, I thought Zaire Franklin hit it on the head where he got asked about it on mm -hmm. Monday. And he said, I asked him about it in the locker right, room on yeah. Sunday, too. And, yeah. and I thought it was, you know, his answer was great. Of just like, yeah, we, we got to give them more to cheer for. We got to give them more of a reason. Can I say one thing, too? I was talking to a good friend of mine who is, you know, the Lions reporter. And, and we were talking a little bit. And you also feel like that. It's such a long suffering fan base. They have been they they have been yeah. in the the cellar, right? They have dwelled in there for years and years, and now they're kind of finally finding under Dan Campbell. And because of some of these incredible moves that they've made, the trade for golf, they've drafted well, all of that. And that this is like we've waited so long for this. This is our window. We are not wasting yeah. it. You they, know, like they can they can see the light because they took the paper bags off their heads. Yeah, you know, right. I mean, right. yeah, like. That's Good for them, by really? the way. I, so I think that yeah. that's also why it's a bit heightened maybe from from the Detroit standpoint is, you know, because you have yeah. Detroit fans who are like, I've never seen a playoff win until last year. You I, know? I also think Detroit and like kind of Buffalo sort of have this like us against the world mentality to yeah. their, their fan bases that is like probably a, a nice little motivating factor of like, hey, we're, we're Detroit and Buffalo. I mean, you're not like, you know thought about as, you know, the, you know, your New Yorks, your Chicago's, Miami's, whatever. Right. And hey, when we get to show ourselves and our civic pride, we're going to go show it yeah. Yeah. on the road. And Guys, we got, we got, we got football teams that drive it. I was so born good, and good for them. Outside of Detroit, Michigan. And I have family back home and we were texting through the game and called after the game and previously and everything. Every one of those fans back home, Lions. Sorry, son. We love you. Sorry, bro. We mm -hmm. love you. Sorry, cuz. We love you. You know, uh, we love you, but it's our Lions. It's yeah. our Lions. We're rooting them on. So a little bit of a tip of the hat because it's been over 50 some years that they've had zero success. So a little bit... Uh, a little bit, uh, never too late, never too whatever that phrase is. Hey, I don't gl know glad we only see him every four years. That's you know? right. That's yeah. right. Who knows? All right, let's give thanks. Uh, the Patriots await, and I, what I say by giving thanks is yes or no to both of you. JJ first. We got to win out to make the playoffs. Yes or no? No, but but it's real hard. If but you it's don't. real hard. It's real hard. The, there is a path to making it at nine and eight. Y yeah. You got to beat Denver. You have to beat Denver. And you got to get some well, other w games to go your way. And honestly, that other loss probably needs to be the New York Giants. 
because that doesn't count for the AFC Conference tiebreaker. Okay. So having said all of that, this game on Sunday is a must win in my mind. Absolutely. Disagree or agree on it. I'm saying win out, Lara. Myself, I know what J.J.'s saying because yeah. it's a stinking league. You I, think, I think I, part of it anything for me, can happen. Part of it for me is less about who you're facing and just about stacking wins and building some momentum and building some confidence and just kind of going, we're going on a run. And we have seen this locker room. A lot of guys have been part of a team that has done that in the past. I think it's just a little bit about playing the most complete football you've played all season and then doing it in consecutive weeks and back to back and finding another level because now you finally have a little bit of continuity that you can carry forward. All right. You know what I want to see this weekend? Go ahead. I want to see the Colts win by two scores. There you go. Oh, like, God. How great yeah, would that please. be? Haven't won when a... have we been able to breathe in right. like the fourth quarter? They're, they're, we, the, the Colts have not won. Uh, of their five games, the biggest margin of victory has been six points. Mm. Win a game by two scores, I like this. and that that just yeah, I don't care who you're playing because you're going to be playing a lot of teams that we're going to be saying I don't care who you're playing over the last stretch of the, the this season. Win some games by two scores. Go beat opponents that you are better than by more than six. Don't let it come down to the last possession. Make sure that you go put your thumb on this game and say, we are the better football team. Let's show it. I think that's how you can spark a run. Drake May's playing great. Young quarterback. We see what they got. Stevenson, the running back, who's always going to do what he does. Jared yeah. Mayo, first first year and that. They're going to be tough. It's going to be up there. But just Former let, Colt Jacoby Brissett. Yes. Let, let me have some like, fun here. We beat the Patriots. Mm-hmm. We got the bye week. We go into the, to Denver. We beat the Broncos. Are you just sitting high and muddy yes, at that point? Yes, because you are 7-7, seven and seven, okay. and seven. you're like, we got two more home games left against the Titans and the Jaguars, and our only road game left is against the New York Giants. There is a possibility that those three teams will be picking 1-2-3 yeah. in the 2025 NFL draft. Now, having said that, <laughs> okay. having said that, do not count your chickens. No. Because – 2021, we might have counted our chickens a little bit before the team that had the number one overall pick I, I've faced them that, with a win and in in the playoffs. I, I know. The, the, the scenarios that await are ridiculous. That's okay, hold saying. on. I got another one for Go you. Go ahead. If the Houston Texans oh boy. Mm. lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars win at, the division? at in Jacksonville, you win the division. there's a chance you win the division. Still, that's in play I, right now. That is, it is still in it play. It is not in play. Concrete but boy, right now. Oh boy, I want to just go back to you. Yeah, no, okay, so real, real quick. Yeah. Here's Houston's remaining schedule. Mm. They go to Jacksonville. They then get the Miami Dolphins. Oh, the, Miami look good. Uh, I hold on. Let you me get it. let me get this right because it's, I, it's I, a stretch. It's a buzzsaw. That stretch. We it talked is about a it buzzsaw. Before, Here, yeah. here's the buzzsaw. I should have. I thought I could do this from memory. All right, at Jacksonville, they get their bye week, same as us, week 14, home against Miami, a surging Miami Dolphins team. That healthy they, Tua, yeah. With healthy Tua. Apparently, Janu Smith is the second coming of Tony Gonzalez. <laughs> then you've got at Kansas City Ooh. on December 21st. Four days later, you're hosting the Baltimore Ravens. Oh. Then you end the season against the team that ended the Jacksonville Jaguars season last year in Nashville, the Tennessee Titans. Oh, wow. And the chaos of Will Levis, who beat the... <laughs> <laughs> beat the Texans wow. on the road despite getting sacked eight times and throwing a pick six. This is, man, this is great. This Don't, is what, I, what I'm saying is, if the Texans lose this weekend right. and the Colts win, do not write off the division just yet. Okay, right. since we're talking about Thanksgiving and we're talking, we dropped Miami in there, did you guys hear the quote from Mike McDaniel about preparing the Dolphins to play in Green Bay on Thanksgiving? <laughs> Goes, How do you do that? He goes, what am I going to do? Walk around with ice cubes in my pocket and throw it at him? <laughs> like, he's, he's so funny. Like, I, his, like, he's so witty and dry. Like, I think he's hilarious. But I just thought that's great. Like, you're always going to get asked about, oh, frozen, you know, frozen tundra Lambeau Field, especially when, you know, you're Miami. But it's like... What are we going to do? Like, we can only, what do we, what do you alter? Like, what, how do you prepare a team? I don't know. We just go in and we play in it, right? Like, the, hilarious. Walk around with ice cubes in my pocket and throw them at them. So, the, my, the Miami Dolphins, that's a big game on Thanksgiving. Oh. Like, big game for the Colts. Keep it, your eye on them, Colts fans. Denver go, and Miami, we got to keep you gotta our eyes the on Packers. those. Go Pack yeah. Go. That's because Miami, after that, they, they, get, they get the Jets twice, mm-hmm. the moribund New York Jets. They, they had that aforementioned game at Houston. They get the 49ers, which that San Francisco is they're getting, they're, they're kind of back. a mess right now. But they'll be back. They go to the Cleveland Browns, yeah. which, you know, Jameis is good for, you know, random win over the Steelers and on Thursday. Quote, yeah. that, what I'm saying is the Miami Dolphins end of the season schedule, a little, little soft. 
Little, they, they've got a shot at making a run here and making that Colts win in week seven count a little bit more and for when, the Colts. When this happens, and, and yeah, we're calling it early. We all, I always do at least. Hey, we're going to go into the, you know, go into New England, do what we have to do, take care of business. Somehow, some way, go out to a tough upcoming Sean Payton led Broncos team, and then you go into these two. I'm talking to you specifically on this because you know about these division games. You've been around here long enough. They stink and drive you nuts. You've got bad, bad teams, and then you've got great teams. But boy, oh boy, those end of the year games, they go into your barn, oh. and you're like, well, we'll win this one, and the line's 13, and somehow some way you lose 24 20 to a team that you shouldn't do. well and, and the titans always love to play you tough yeah, right yeah. they yep. no matter what their season looks like that you are going to get their best that is just in their dna that is how they attack and that's kind of just tends to be you know with division games how it plays right. out um yeah I, but and, you got you got them in your barn and that's that's huge that's These huge two at home that's why are I mean, massive. Yeah. we got we got Tennessee and Jacksonville. Houston also is Tennessee and Jacksonville, but they got them on the road. Ooh. So that is where I'm like, okay, you know, if you're if you're envisioning a world where the Colts look to to win the division, they probably got to win out, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, so because you're you're not you can't win the tiebreaker over Houston, and you got to have. And by the way, some wheels got to fall off in Houston for that to happen. But they did. Are, it are they of, already falling uh, off true, in Houston? But, but that, they we saw their flip last year. They ended up being represented. Yeah, in the AFC South. We, we also saw the Anything. Jaguars flip last yeah, year. Right, right. It's a reminder. Nothing is ever settled. I in like the NFL. where we're at, though, guys. I like where we're at with five games left. Obviously, you guys will both be up in. Um, uh, bo- both be up in New yeah. England. Mm-hmm. Give, give me it real quick. It's going to be cold up there. Do you, do you get out? Do you? I actually don't think it's colder there than yeah, here. It's actually, like 40s. It, I think it, it'll be. Yeah, I think the low yeah. is in like the high 20s. The, right. uh, the high is right around 40. So yeah, not terrible. But uh, yeah, we'll get out and we'll we'll do a little dinner up there and everything. So I heard I heard a bird flew on my shoulder and said the great Amanda Foster from Colts.com. You can read her obviously. Yes. <laughs> Is, go- is headed to Boston. Is that true? We're going to be well, not Boston because the game's not in Boston. Well, you Jeffrey, know what I, you know. What I'm uh, yeah, we're going to we're going to be uh, tag team in coverage from good Foxborough. And by the way, good for Sunday. you. I said that because she's sitting right behind the cameras. <laughs> Have fun out there too. New well, England native. New England native. Matt That's Foster. true. That's true. Okay. Uh, okay. Re- real quick on the Patriots though, because yep. we don't have a preview show mm-hmm. on Thursday on account of it oh, being yeah. Thanksgiving. Uh, Drake May's kind of nice. Yeah. Drake Drake May's kind of a nice player. I. I, the little bits and pieces I've seen from him, I'm like, I think this kid can ball a little bit. You, you got to be, you got to be a little bit worried about just like he can come make a couple plays with his legs that make you just uh, worried enough. This is not going to be a cakewalk for the Colts. I, I, you know, you look at their receiving talent and you're like, who's he throwing the ball to? You got Pop Douglas, you know, a couple guys, but he's Drake May just has like some sort of it factor yeah. that. You got to be you got to be accountable for him because he can he can also run it. You look at what he's done great, on the ground. By the way, great TD last week on the run, sprinting out to yeah. the right, getting bared down. On he by had defensive eight linemen. carries for ninety five yards against the Titans. Good gosh. Earlier this month, wow. I mean, he Drake Drake May is going to be a good player in this league, and I think right now you're already seeing the signs that he's going to be a good player. And that's part of why I think that. For this defense, you got to kind of come out like you did against the Jets and just smother them early. Yes, you know, like the the way that you went their first five drives and didn't allow them a first down. Like, and you know, I mean, obviously, like I'm not to not to equate Aaron Rodgers to Drake May, right? This, but I'm just kind of saying that some same, people might say Drake May is playing better right now. R- well, <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying that same type of imposing right. front domination early. I think that if you can do that, I, I lo- loved what we saw in that performance. So I think if you can come out with some sort of similar effectiveness and draw upon what went well in that game, especially, you know, knowing how the Jets were going to try to run on you and what you were able to do. So that's just kind of, that's something that I think noted, right? Of course, the good young quarterback that Drake May is. I think for this defense, you would like to see some sort of similar attack. By the way, Drake May is the only starting quarterback in the NFL younger, younger than, than Anthony, Anthony Richardson. How about that? How about that? And little fun tidbit, you probably remember Clyde Christensen. Of course. Offensive co- coordinator, I know quarterback you're going with this. coach. Yeah. Uh, spent the last couple of years, last three years, volunteer assisting for Mac Brown's uh, squad down there in North Carolina. Knew yeah. all about Josh Downs, raved about Josh Downs. We asked him about Drake May last year. He said, I said, well, who's you reminding? He said, here's, here's what he is. If you want as close as you can get to Andrew Luck, 
It's Drake May. Wow. Ooh. And he and he had coached Andrew Luck on that. So high praise for him. And now he's getting the reps that he needs. That's we saw, great. Like I had said, I saw an incredible touchdown pass from Drake May on the run, out of the pocket, busted, making a 35, 45-yard throw, across the middle, touchdown. So the kids got it. Colts are going to be faced with the yeah. guys, you know, who's it, ready to run and ready to throw. I don't know that he has a receiver help out there that they mm-hmm. really want because when you talk about the receivers out there, you talk more about the tight ends, the two tight ends, yeah. and the wideouts. You know? Well, it's funny, like Drake May, after the 2022 college season, it was like, all right, it's him and Caleb Williams yeah. neck and neck to be the number one overall pick yeah. after the 23 season. Drake May's play falls off a little bit with North Carolina last year because he doesn't have Josh Downs. Mm. Josh Downs was his guy yeah. who he was throwing to. Downs had 1,000-yard season, yeah. 70, 80 catches. He, he loses Josh Downs. That offense mm. loses do- Josh Downs, and the numbers don't look as good. The tape was still there, and that's why he was a top three pick. So would you say he was playing back in his Tar Heels a little bit? Ah, good one. I, well, I, in fact, I would <laughs> okay. say that. Good one, guys. All right. Hey, good show. Obviously, the Patriots await. That's a 1 o'clock kickoff up in Foxborough. JJ and Lara will have boots on the ground, and Amanda as well. I probably will have boots, yeah, too, because it'll will be cold. Have be, yeah. The coldest I've ever been. I've, I've traveled to a lot of places around this world. The coldest I've ever been is a Boston Common going across that field one day in January, across that area, and not having the proper lining oh, yeah. that mm-hmm. I had on. And I wanted to stop and just, I mean, it was the coldest I've ever been is Boston. <laughs> so, unfortunately, I won't be up there this weekend with you but guys i'm there with you in spirit appreciate it and snow boots and snow boots and snow boots all right thanksgiving time guys i want to go with this obviously thursday football three great games three great games are happening this coming thursday i want to go over some traditions are you getting your hands dirty miss overton are you are you in the kitchen at all are you going to relatives are going to feed you what's the well it's a lineup i i already have on my waistbandy stretchy yeah, pants you need those just got already got these also they're silk so i'm just keep sliding <laughs> off if you've just been seeing me i'm just like sliding <laughs> Lighting right oh, Lara's posture is really awful today. <laughs> it's really, Mom, I'm so sorry. I'm like, very much. Yeah, but they're, it's, I'm sliding around. So, yeah, already got on my stretchy pants. Yep. Um, so, ready to go uh, with an elastic waistband. Uh, we are going to my husband's family on Thursday, and then on Friday, we will head to Louisville. We will see my family. Oh, nice. Um, and we will make a little venture over to Churchill Downs and, you know, kind of take in all of all of Louisville. So Churchill Downs? Yeah, the, the, fam goes over, the fam goes over to for to racing take in, or for- take, the end of the fall meet, my oh, friend. Oh, I love it. Okay. So just go over and watch the ponies. Oh, that's awesome. Give me it. What's going on in Stankovitz house? My uh, my favorite Thanksgiving tradition is that my my lovely, wonderful mother makes me a non-dairy pumpkin pie every oh, year that no up. one else eats yeah. because everyone else is like, give me the real stuff, and I get a whole pumpkin pie to myself there every year. There you go. A couple days it's a whole done pumpkin or is it pie a couple weeks? Uh, a whole days. cheese pizza days. just for me. Yeah. Not days. cheese. Not cheese. Right. That's but, awesome. Are you getting your hands dirty in the kitchen at all? Helping out the wife or at all? Uh, we're it? we're going we're going to some relatives place okay. up in Chicago, so I'll probably just be on uh, making sure my boys don't break anything around the yeah, house for duty sure. for um, the most part. Great. Yeah. But eyes will be on football, right? Of course. Oh, the no question. No question. I got yeah. drumstick dash yeah. Oh, yeah. in the morning. There we go. Good so job. So a quick little a quick little plug uh, for anyone who is around Indianapolis on Thanksgiving morning. Uh, the Wheeler Mission drumstick dash goes through Broad Ripple. All are welcome. Uh, it is family friendly. There is a two and a half mile course. There's also a 4.3 mile course. Biggest fundraiser of the year for Wheeler Mission and all the phenomenal work yeah. that they do with this city is homelessness and to provide services for women and children across central Indiana. So it's an outstanding cause. I will be there. It's an annual tradition that I very much love so much. And uh, you can try to catch Dash, the turkey. Yeah. So, you know, we were talking about eluding bears and alligators, yeah. but this is one. You want to catch the turkey. <laughs> no serpentine on there's that a, one. There's a prize when you catch uh, Dash there at the starting awesome. line of, uh, Good of the call on that. Dash, so. Wheeler Mission has always worked with the Colts for a long, oh, long time. Amazing people. Hey, amazing, amazing people on there. If you want to help people less fortunate than you around this holiday season, it's coming up. We got the next six weeks of it. Go to Wheeler Mission. I don't know if it's wheelermission.com but you can find out. They yeah, do, you get Giving Tuesday yeah, coming up. Great you know, if you're looking up for a local I'm, organization. I'm glad that you yeah. said that. And by the way, we need an update, Lara Overton. How many mi- for how many days now uh, you have run at least one mile? So 
on November 1st, it was five years. So November 1 plus 24 or 5 or whatever we're at. So I, I don't like 1850 something. 1850 something, like that. something consecutive days. I, keep a, I still keep a paper planner. I'm oh. very old school. So I write it down in my notepad. So <laughs> I've got to like catch up. at least a mile a day for, give me the number again. It's ridiculous. 1850 something. 1850 so it's something. Five, basically five years and almost one month. Wow. We're coming up on, yeah. I have eaten Thank you. for 1,800 straight days. I've known that. That's about best. Hey, well, thanks. I, thanks, thanks JG. I appreciate JJ, you. JJ, close us out right now, buddy. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, we're going to be tuned into football on yeah. Thanksgiving. Fortunately, Thanksgiving dinner starts at uh, 3.30 p.m. Central. Okay. Which is the kickoff of the Lions, or not the Lions, the Giants-Cowboys game. Oh, yeah. Um, which I'm sure I'm still going to tune into because I'm a sicko. Absolutely. But uh, that that's the... That's a good little break in between Bears, Lions, and Dolphins, Packers. Okay, really quickly, though, JJ, you mentioned, of course, you want to be rooting. Colts fans should be rooting for the Packers, Mm -hmm. right, in this one. Are there any other games that we need to be watching with implications for the Indianapolis Colts on Thursday night? Uh, Not on on Thursday, but over Thanksgiving. Yeah. Steelers, Bengals. Because it's a Black Friday Mm -hmm. game now. Mm -hmm. Which is Raiders, Chiefs. Yep. Not much of an impact there. Okay. Um, Steelers, Bengals. If you want to potentially think about the Steelers getting drawn into a – Late season mm. wild card positioning battle. They're eight and three. You're you're pretty far behind them right now. You want to root for the Bengals. If you say I just want the Bengals to be done and out of my mind, you want the Steelers to win. Since he's still four and seven, still they still have a it. shot yeah. if they can run the table. Still in it. Houston at Jacksonville. Keep an eye on that one. And then let's see what else we got. Oh, uh, Monday night, Browns at Broncos. Nice. Okay. Oh. Ooh. I'm, I'm saying go Browns. Jam- Jameis Winston already winning one game in the snow. And yeah. Broncos have the same bye week as the Colts. They do. So both teams okay. will come off a bye. Real quick, real quick on the late bye week. So the Colts have a week 14 latest bye. Possible latest possible bye Latest possible bye. There's, there are five other teams that have the latest possible bye. All of them played on Thursday night. The Colts have not. So all those other teams have got Had a, little, a mini bye. little mini bye to get a little bit of rest, a little extra self-scout, a little just mental break. Uh, mm-hmm. The Colts have not got that. Hey, this is a pretty good one. Uh, no chance that that Broncos Colts game could be flexed. I mean, no. No, I think it's no too way. late, right? They've uh, already, they already made that call. They've right. It, it's not going to get flexed. You got Packers Seahawks on Sunday night. Um, it's too it's too late for the Thursday night game. Gotcha. Okay, just curious because that one. Yeah, that's a good call. Huh? Implication. I mean, you know, the loser could be out of the mix at that point. Who knows if both teams? Uh, win this yeah, Sunday? probably not. Yeah. Did you? You didn't talk to Goodell about that when he was at the game on Sunday. You I didn't know. make a suggestion. You we, didn't go up to him and say, I "Raj, hey, hey Raj, listen." I to did me. get a chance to say hi to him. You did. Yeah, he came right in front of me. Hey, Commissioner Howard. Same thing. I'm not bagging you, Commissioner. I'm not. But you break my hand every time I've shaken your. I've shaken. Yeah. Shaking, shook in your hand. I mean, he that's goes, a Hank Hill test. He goes for the crush, not yeah. the crush, but he goes for to let you there. I'm almost down to one knee when you think when you shake hands. We need the, to work on your grip strength. The, yeah, the coach. I, I mean, I'm serious. It's, I, I, these guys in the back, I've shaken a lot of hands over my life, but Goodell goes on and he's like, uh, like this. You're down to one knee. Love you, Kamish. By the way, uh, I think Don't the NFL, find me. I, I think there's probably like a 10 year moratorium on Colts Broncos primetime games <laughs> yeah. after, after the 2022 22. <laughs> Thursday yeah. night game. I don't think we're getting that one until about 2032. That's right. Good point. Hey, good show today. Thanks for your help. Have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, hey, you guys too. Great Thanksgiving. Thankful yeah. for both of you. Yeah. And, and for Ava behind the camera and Amanda Foster here in both. support as thank well. Thank you both. Yes. And a big giving thanks to you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening every week that you guys are here. And I know you Colts fans that are, are rabid and they're going to be filling the house with no more Lions or Bears or Steelers fans around because greatness awaits this program over the course of this season and next. Okay. Colts.com. All the information again at JJ Stankovitz at Lara Overton on Twitter. X. I'm Jeffrey Gorman. Guys, have a great Thanksgiving. Have a great week. Go Colts. We'll talk to you next week.